In this second example from this section, 10.4, um, example 10G, we have a system that has two separate objects, and we'll remind ourselves that back in Chapter 7, we were able to handle similar situations where we asked those questions, are we moving, are we higher for each object individually, and we'll see how that works here in Chapter 10 as well. The system is complicated enough that we'll draw a separate before picture and a separate after picture. So in the before picture, we are a certain height above the ground and nothing is currently moving. We have the mass of both objects, we have the radius of the disk, we have the height above the ground, and nothing is currently moving. This is our before picture. In our after picture, We have the disc has stayed put because it has nowhere to be able to move. It's attached to the wall, but it is rotating, omega. And this thing has dropped down to the ground, but is moving as it is about to hit the ground, when, as it reaches the ground. So with our before and after situation, we can ask ourselves the questions we normally do. So before and after. So the first question that we ask is, are we moving? At the start of the problem, nothing is moving. We let go in the before picture so that things can start to rotate or move. But at the beginning, nothing is rotating. Okay. In the after situation, the little mass, and the little mass has a mass of 350 grams which means 0 0.35 kilograms. The disc itself is not moving. The disc is attached to the wall, so it's not physically moving up or down or side to side overall. But the little mass, 1 half times that 0 0.35 times our unknown V, that is moving, physically moving. The next question we can ask ourselves are, are we rotating? Again, at the start of the problem, nothing is, is having any kind of motion, and so nothing is rotating at the start of the problem. At the end of the problem, this disk is rotating. This little mass is not spinning around, it is just dropping straight down. So we have one half I of the disk times omega squared plus zero for the um, little mass here that is not rotating. Then we ask ourselves about gravity. We look around and we say, are we higher at the start of the problem? If we look at the disk, the disk in both cases stays at exactly the same height, which means it is not higher at the beginning of the problem, and it is also not higher at the end of the problem, because that full sentence or that full question is, are we higher than we are at other points in the problem? And that disk uh, doesn't fit the bill there. For the little mass, though, it is higher at the beginning of the problem than it is at the end. So it is absolutely higher at this point in the problem, 0.35 GH, than it is at the end of the problem. Then we do a quick check. There's no springs at all in this situation, so we don't worry about them here. And we check, is there a work term? Now, as always, that work term is not part of the before column or the after column. It's underneath all of it. And we're looking for a separate push or pull or air resistance or friction. And the only forces that we know about in this problem are gravity. The disc is being also held in place by some kind of um, nail, which would be opposing gravity. But those aren't contributing a work term because that disc isn't moving anywhere. For this little mass, although it is moving and gravity is in the direction of the movement, that's what that potential energy term accounts for. Then tension is also playing a role in this problem. There is tension that is going to be moving uh, in the direction of motion, causing torque for the disc, but it's going to be opposing the motion um, for the little mass falling. And so just like in Chapter 7 when we had objects tied together, 
we can't have tension cause a work term because it's internal to the system. It is taking just as much energy away from the disc as it is adding to the hanging mass and, and vice versa. Okay, so if we look, although this setup looks complicated, it's only because we were asking those questions, four questions, about each of those objects in the before and each of these objects in the after. But let's look at what actually happens here once we write down the um, equation. So energy before plus work added equals energy after. And we have that in the before column, we have a single um, yes answer. All of the other ones were no, and so they're all going to be zeros. But here we have that that 0.35 kilogram mass times 9.8 times the height, which is 20 centimeters, and we know that that has to be in meters, so 0.2 meters. That is our only energy at the start of the problem. Then since our work at a term is, says no, we have zero. And then for energy after, we have two terms. And I'm going to write them out as they stand here. We have 1 half times 0 0.35 times v squared plus 1 half i of the disk. All right, I'm going to try that again. so I don't run out of space. So I'm going to write them just like they are here. We have 1 half times 0 0.35 times v squared plus 1 half i moment of inertia of the disk times omega squared. Okay, so we can simplify this a little bit. Um, a couple of things to note here. Normally I would write mgh, but because there's two masses, I'm plugging the numbers in right away. And that term now has all of the numbers in it, and so we can just calculate that value is 0 0.686. Then 0 0.5 times 0 0.35, so 1 half times 0 0.35 is 0 0.175 v squared. And then it looks like we have a couple of other unknowns. It seems like we've got a problem here. However, this is where our new chapter 10 understanding comes into play. So we have our equation here at the bottom that we're solving for. And it there, looks like there's too many unknowns. We're just trying to find this velocity. So I'm going to erase the top. You can always pause the video if you haven't finished the setup. But I'm going to erase the top so that we can revisit those two missing terms. First, we have the moment of inertia of the disk. That is a tool we can look up that disks are 1 half mr squared. So this particular disk has a mass of 2 kilograms and a radius of 14 centimeters or 0 0.14 meters. Just the radius gets squared, and so we get 0 0.0196 kilograms times meters squared. And then separately, in this situation where we are rotating, and that part of the disk, the edge of the disk, is moving tangentially with the speed v, those two things are related by the radius of the disk. R omega equals V, and so we can rewrite that unknown omega in terms of the V that we're looking for over the radius, 0.14. So that can go in down here. So what we have at the bottom at this point is 0 0.686. equals 0 0.175 v squared 
plus one half. The I is this 0 0.0196. And instead of omega, we're writing V over 0 0.14, but that term gets squared. So we can take everything that is not the V squared and multiply it together, keeping in mind that that 0.14 squared is on the bottom. And so we end up with, on the left, we still have 0.686 and 0.175 V squared plus all of that becomes 0.5 V squared. So that's all of these numbers multiplied together with the v squared still as an unknown. So we combine these two terms on the side, and now I'm going to um, get our space back on the top here to finish. So we can combine those two terms on the uh, right side. So 0.686 still on the left, and now 0.175 plus 0.5 is 0.675 v squared. So we divide by that on both sides. And so we get 1.016 equals v squared. We'll take the square root. And it will still come out to be very similar to 1 but now it's 1.008 or 1.01 .01 meters per second. Remember that we do need to take the square root. Um, it is different, but it's close to one here. All right, so in this problem, I know I had to erase some of the bits and pieces, but in this problem, in our big setup that we had at the start of the problem on top, what we did was we just asked all of our questions about each of those objects separately and we found that there was only one source of energy at the beginning of the problem, and there were two sources of energy at the end of the problem. Then the steps involved that are from chapter 10 specifically is the fact that we know how to solve for this moment of inertia of the disk. We did it in the part that we've already erased and got a number value. And this unknown omega and this unknown v are not two separate unconnected unknowns, we can write omega in terms of the V that we're asking to solve for here. So in this problem, we got uh, one meter per second for the velocity. It's not going that quickly because that mass isn't all that heavy, but we see how it plays out in this uh, situation. So uh, as always, you can rewatch these videos. Although the numbers kind of looked a little bit messy, this problem was significantly less um, less work than the previous one because there were only three terms that were non-zero terms. Uh, but we can compare this one with the previous example, 10F, and see how the process is similar and how it is different with the two problems from the same section of the book. So I will see you in the next video.